Hey fellow explorers, today I'm joined by a very special guest, my dad, Electric Rick, and today he's gonna to be answering your questions. 25 questions in particular that you all shared with me that you wanted to ask my dad on YouTube and on Instagram, so we're gonna roll right into it. The way these questions are organized, the first set of questions are about my dad and about me. The second set of questions are kind of about his words of wisdom, life parenting tips, and the third set are about travel. And if you see me look over here, this is because I have the questions over here. All right, so dad, the first question is, how did you get the nickname Electric Rick? Well, Chris, that's a very interesting question that a lot of people ask me for some reason. Back when I was a tender child of five years old, I took my little finger and I stuck it into a light socket and got quite a shock. I then um, turned the switch off on the light socket and stuck it in again and didn't get a shock. Well, I stuck it in a third time after turning it back on and got a shock again. Well, would you believe it that that developed a lifelong interest in electricity? The next thing I did was take my parents' radio apart and it cost them $25 to have it put back together. <laughs> so I, was, uh, I was well on my way to uh, becoming uh, an electric kind of a guy. Well, that's a very shocking story. Uh, so speaking of getting into trouble, the second question comes to you from Philip, and Philip asks, did Chris get into any trouble growing up? Hmm, no trouble. Absolutely no trouble that I can think of. I yeah. can't imagine any trouble. I I was a very boring child. So question number three comes to you from Colleen. She asks, what is a similarity that you and Chris have? Well, we have similar hair that we have, you know. Curly, curly, curly hair. hair, yeah. We, we both use the uh, the Floby. That's right, the Floby, the vacuum haircutting solution. Um, we're, we're both very polite. Mm, very, please, very, thank very you. Very polite, yeah. yes. Easygoing, uh, optimistic, um, friendly. Honest, kind, civil to our friends. Always like to um, bring out the best in people and, and show uh, people a good time. I, I also think we have a love for technology in common. So my dad being electric Rick, always a techie, you know, that's where a big uh, passion of mine for computers and cameras and all these things came from too. Uh, next question. Uh, question number four comes to you from Brian. Brian says, how has San Diego changed since you lived in San Diego raising Chris? Most notably uh, would be the downtown area, which has developed into just a wonderful place. You can go down and have meals. And uh, when I was growing up, it was uh, a little seedier, a lot more Navy personnel there and pinball parlors and all night movie theaters. So I've seen a lot of changes downtown. I've seen a lot of changes in, in the zoo, in Balboa Park, it's gotten bigger and more attractions, always things to do. Um, closer to home, I would say I've noticed more traffic on the road. For sure, for sure. And more red lights. It seems more like lights in general. More right? lights in general. Yeah. But, uh, Brian has a second part to his question, which is, where do you live now and why? Where do I live? Yeah. I, I, live, <laughs> I live right where I, uh, I grew up uh, in Mission Hills. I was born a mile away from here in Mercy Hospital. And now I'm living right on the corner of a wonderfully busy street that I can set up lights and have fun watching people go by. So I live, I live in, a, in a lovely house in San Diego. It's a house that's over 100 years old, 102 years old, bought in 1920. And by the way, this is, this is Electric Rick's house that you see. And if you're like, Chris, your background looks a little bit different. This is because this is Electric Rick's background. Well. Um, the most asked question overall, like numerous people ask this question is, what was Chris like as a child? And I hear a train whistle yeah, in the back or something like that. Yeah, yeah, right. There's lots of interesting things in this house from lights and sounds. That's and, actually somebody calling yeah. on the cell phone. Oh, all right. Good. And saying, uh, hi, who is it? Yeah, you hi, know, who so is it? I guess it will go to a voicemail. Huh? Yeah. What was the question? What What was I like as a child? Oh, you were just a, a, a very obnoxious child. Uh, 
Always into things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Setting things on fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Very obnoxious uh, child. Uh, and, and a curious lad, you know, a very curious lad. Loved to uh, find out how things worked. He was always fascinated. He was, he was the kind of a child that I could, uh, well, how should I say it? That I could photograph well and shoot videos of and and he didn't he didn't mind that you know he seemed like he except when he was hungry and he, he <laughs> sure then i want to eat <laughs> don't get your camera in front of my food That's you know right. was, yeah no stopping <laughs> right. when, when there's a food involved but uh, yeah he was a wonderful lad he was easy going in fact i always said that he was a uh, chris you, you were God's gift to mankind. Aww. <laughs> just, I, I couldn't ask for anything better in my life. I had no, you know, I'm just in love with my son. Aww. <laughs> uh, question number six from Ryan is, what is the most embarrassing Chris story you can share? And then Ryan says, sorry, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know, this is, this is a story that, that Chris knows very well. But we were in the spaghetti factory, <laughs> and and this this particular spaghetti factory, one of our favorite places to go when he was a lad, had tables and a lot of them had beds that you could, he could lie down on if we <laughs> ate. He could actually sleep, and we could continue to eat. But in this particular uh, evening, we were up on the second floor, and there was a banister there which had. Um, Oh, you know, these rungs, and he managed to stick his head in there and couldn't get it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> his mother freaked out. <laughs> oh. Well, I, I, personally, I didn't freak out. I thought, well, well, he got in, he's got to get out somehow. Yeah, like, so. Yeah, so I was trying, trying to pull him, ah, my ear. <laughs> couldn't get out. Well, obviously the solution, the, the, the railings, they kind of went like that, and so, you know, we raised his head up and, you know, came out very easily, but that's, a, yeah. I think that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. I think the other one uh, that my mom likes to tell is when we were eating at Benihana of Tokyo, which is a teppanyaki oh, boy, that was, place. That was very exciting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I apparently pushed over like a large statue or something like that and a fountain and yes. lots of things broke. Lots so. of things broke. And yeah. that, boy, that'd be perfect for Just for Laughs if you ever watched Just for Laughs. And, <laughs> and the personnel, they just came out and they put their hands behind their back and, and looked at it. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to our lobby yeah, here? Right. Yeah. Yeah, that was exciting. That is indeed exciting. Uh, and so I think that's probably going to answer Goumer's question, which was the, what was the worst behaved Chris was mm. as a child? So um, now question number seven for you from Tiger Knee is, Electric Rick, why are you so handsome? Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Must be good genes, huh? <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's just smiling. You know, they say the most important thing you wear is your smile. And so if... If I'm smiling and I'm happy, then I'm sure that I look a lot better than if I was bummed out and yeah. depressed. And yeah, for sure. I think that's another thing my dad and I have in common a lot is just like smiling. You know, people often say to me sometimes, like at, at, when I was in co college, one professor said to me like, Chris, why, why are you smiling? Why are you always smiling? Like whenever I look at you out in class, you're always smiling. Like, it's like I don't know. Do I need to have, you know? The RBF, the resting, mm, just angry all the time. You see these angry people. Yeah, for there, sure. You know, so, you know, I try to smile as much as possible because it feels good. Yeah, it, <laughs> indeed it does. And it's contagious, I yeah, think. Yeah. Uh, Tyrone asks with question number eight, where did you get that electrifying shirt? And he's asking about the shirt I posted in the picture to solicit the questions, which was the shirt of the jellyfish that you have. Well, that was a wonderful gift from my son. You see, Chris knows the kind of shirts that I like, and he also knows where to find them. So rather than getting Father's Day gifts of a tie... <laughs> that he would never wear. <laughs> would yeah, never, right. That I would never wear. I get these wonderful shirts. And I have a collection. I think I must have at least 10 shirts now. And each one is very special. And everyone comments on the shirts. So I love the shirts. When I wear the shirts, it reminds me of Chris. Because it's and I can tell the story because so many people say, "Well, where'd you get those shirts from?" And I said, "Well, 
It was a gift. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can't get one now. Yeah, right. yeah. It's always a good answer. Um, question number nine comes from uh, Lean Into Life the English Way. Uh, and the question is, what was one thing you taught Chris when he was growing up about life? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I can, I can share one. Yes. I can share one. Uh, so one thing I always learned from my dad uh, was about money. Uh, and you always said your goal was never to be rich, but your goal was just to have enough money that you didn't have to worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that that's kind of moderated how I live my life. I'm not always chasing the good old dollar, but saying, well, at this point, I think I've done enough to earn enough today. I think I can enjoy my life at this point, um, which I think has led to things like travel and going to Disneyland and instead of, you know, always working uh, like 82 hours in a day. Well, I'm glad, like I'm glad you yeah. picked up on that. Yeah. I think that's very worthwhile not to, uh, you know, I, I, I work to live. I don't live to work. That's right. And, and uh, so taking the time off. Enjoying life, especially living here in San Diego, mm -hmm. where it's so nice so much of the time. Yeah. You hate to be stuck inside, unless you're doing the kind of work that you really enjoy. For sure. For sure. Which Making videos like this, then I never work a day in my life. So, all right. Okay. Uh, question number 10 comes from uh, Caro. The question is, what do you now know that you wish you knew before, particularly as a parenting tip? Ooh, I should think about that one because what do I know now that I didn't know before? Mm. You know, <laughs> I, I just, I know now that, that I certainly didn't need to worry about my capabilities as a father. And, and since I never had a father myself, I never really knew what it was like to be a father or what I needed to do to be a father. And so my philosophy was just to be there for Chris and to allow him to do whatever it is that he wanted to do that wasn't dangerous. If it was dangerous, then I would move it out of his way and focus him in a different direction. And he'd go, okay, <laughs> fine, I'll be doing that. So yeah, and so I was searching, you know, reading books and trying to understand what was necessary to be a good father and um, the thing that I, I really believed is that I had found the perfect wife because she was the perfect mother. All right. And I didn't need to worry about him so much because that part was taken care of. And I was just there to offer guidance when, when needed. And get me out of the railings at the <laughs> get spaghetti factory. Yeah, yeah. yeah, get out of the railings and, you know. That's important. Well, clearly I'm alive today, so you did that well, uh, yeah, you know. I did well. So. I, I often joke, and I'm sure the spunky princess will appreciate this looking back later, when OC Girl says like, oh, how was your day if it's daddy-daughter day? And I'm like, well, sh she's still alive. You know, I, I did it. I kept her alive today, right? Um, but, you know, obviously that's we had fun too. Uh, all right, question number 11 comes from cutie girl Jenny. She asks, uh, do you have any advice for new parents. Maybe you already talked about your parenting advice. She also has advice for young kids or for future college graduates. What's your, what's your life advice for the formative generation out there? For the uh, formative generation. So the, for the college uh, graduate, um, I would say just hang in there. And uh, as we just mentioned, we don't want to overwork ourselves. Um, believe, in, believe in luck and believe or expect what is what I do. I try to. I try to expect a miracle, and by believing that a miracle will happen, it keeps me from going into sadness and glum, depression. So by believing that a miracle will happen, and I've seen many miracles happen. Um, I would recommend that uh, concept to be adopted by the newly graduated college type of person. Question 12 comes from Eat Van City. Speaking of pinball, he says, what is your favorite pinball machine? <sighs> There's so many great pinball machines. My favorite pinball machine uh, is probably the one I haven't played yet. 
All right, whatever the new one out is. Yeah, it's always, you know, the, right? You can only play one pinball machine for so long. Um, I will give my, my favorite pinball machine is Medieval Madness. That's my favorite pinball machine. Whenever okay. I see Medieval Madness, uh, I play that okay. one. I guess I would have to say my favorite pinball machine then would be The Simpsons. Okay, yeah. good, good. Uh, question 13, Nick asks you, what is your favorite color? I almost want to say that it's yellow, but it's not. Because oh, Nick, My, did, I didn't read this part of the question, which he said, if it's not yellow, then this would be a controversy. But go ahead with your <laughs> controversial answer, because I know it's not yellow. So my favorite <laughs> color is orange. Yeah. You know, what can I say? Mm -hmm. Orange. And my second favorite color would be magenta. Mm -hmm. um, and my third favorite color would be yellow. Yeah. I will say in this room that we're in, there are a lot of purples, pinks, blues, magenta, like... My dad has a tendency to like a lot of rich, vibrant colors, I would say, that, that tend to be in that orange, reddish, purplish spectrum. Yes, bright colors. I don't like the dark, Dark versions colors, of it, no. no. I prefer that. You haven't gone goth yet. No, probably, no not yeah. yet. I'll probably stick with the brighter colors. Uh, Peter says, uh, this is question 14, he says, Hi, Electric Rick. Hello there. And he says, At what age did you realize that your son was not just an... IT engineer, but had turned famous with his travel videos online. And then Peter goes to say, because he is, and if in doubt, take a walk with him up and down the strip in Las Vegas. By the way, thank you, Peter. I, I didn't pay Peter to say that. No, no. Yeah. I don't know what <laughs> right, you're like, Well, on this date in 19 something something. Um, I don't know when I realized that. At some point, it, it dawned upon me, maybe when uh, he started talking about how wonderful things were and how many people were watching his channel and, and how everything was wonderful and, and uh, la 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 and uh, so yeah, at some point it just dawned upon me. I said, oh well, it was pretty, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe it was when I got your cool business card. All right, yeah, you know, yeah. I thought you'd, then oh. it's real, then it's real. My dad helps promote the channel by handing out business cards. I have Yellow Productions yeah. cards and Spunky Princess cards. So if you see him out in the street and you don't have one, make sure to ask. Maybe, if you see me out in the street, you can ask because I always carry well, maybe them Maybe that's when I got the shirt, the Yellow Productions shirt. All right, that's when it's real too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thought, oh, uh -huh. wow, I, no, I'm, I'm part of the staff on yeah. some level. Part of the crew, <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Uh, question 16 comes from Emmett. Uh, he says, hello, E R. Hello. Hello. Uh, I don't have a question. I just wanted to tell you your son's videos bring a lot of joy to a whole lot of people. You did a great job of raising him. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I enjoy the videos myself, and I'm just really impressed with how well he's taken my lead and followed, and now he's ahead of me. Well, I had a good teacher, so <laughs> I've talked about this on um, previous uh, videos before, but uh, Electric Rick did wedding videography, and so at a young age, I would often go along with him to shoot weddings, which was definitely a different style than travel videos, but that's what got me started on the whole, um, how do I know what a camera is and what part to look through? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, right. Yeah, right. Know when to take off a lens cap. <laughs> exactly, right. Why is it all black? It's a yeah, lens cap. That's all. I have a problem here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, question 17 comes from Kid Blue Creations. This question is, was it hard to find extra large shoes for Chris as a kid? I never found any <laughs> shoes for Chris as a kid. So I really don't know. I, I let his mother and him take care of the shoe aspect. Yeah, and I will say it was hard. I mean, it's still still to this day hard to find. This is size 14 Nikes. Mm. It is still hard to find them. It's easier today when everything's online. You can just order size 14. But uh, back in the day when I was younger, Growing up in San Diego, uh, my mom and I would often go down to the um, border between San Diego and Tijuana. There's an outlet mall there. Like one of the first Nike factory outlets was there and they always had big sizes because that's where all the basketball players went. And they had good discounts. And they were cheap too. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right. That's right. Instead of, or like if we'd go to like Nordstrom's or Foot Locker, it would be like, hey, uh, like I'd go in the store and be like, what do you have in size 14? And they'll be like, uh, we have this one pair of shoes right here. All right, yeah, we should drink something. Dr. So. Rick, what are you drinking today? But today we're drinking the uh, watermelon uh, beverage. <laughs> it's a nice, uh, flavorful. Oh, so good. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. By the way, 
now some people who say like, Chris, you annoy us when you drink and uh, give that. <laughs> right? Anyway, now you know. Yeah, now, now you know where that comes from. <laughs> good, good. All right. Uh, and you can also tell my dad enjoys glitter lamps and lava lamps. And this one, uh, just for us here, is the little kind of globe that's levitating there in the back. There Isn't that neat? All right. That's cool. Uh, K Clark, question number 18. K says, uh, he looks like a fun, relaxing dad. Where was his favorite place to eat? Or where is your favorite place to eat? Chiquita's Mexican restaurant was definitely my favorite place to eat Mexican food. Unfortunately, after 50 years, they closed up. Which was a restaurant in San Diego. And All then, right. Then, so what's your favorite then, place to eat now? Then my favorite place to eat now. Uh, you know, it's got to be in and out In and out yeah, It's my favorite place um, to eat if I'm going to eat there. Tell me about this place. Well, Ho Dad's is definitely high on my list of favorite places to eat, but we just don't get down there that often. I was down there just uh, four days ago and had the Ho Dad burger. Mighty good. When you go down to OB and it's lunchtime, dinner time, you'll find a line of people waiting to get in. And when you get inside, it's decorated in old license plates. They have a they have a VW van that they've chopped in half, sort of, and turned that into a Hodad's uh, vehicle. Now, a Hodad, tell them what a Hodad is. Do you know what a Hodad I, is? I, I it, should know, but I assume it's a surf term since there's a surfboard it, on it, the it, sign. It is yeah. a surf, surf term. So what is a Hodad? A Hodad is a guy who has a surfboard and hangs out with the surfers but doesn't do, go in the water. <laughs> All right, good, good, good. Right. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah. a surf. Because yeah. yeah, uh -huh. yeah. that's how he picks up on the girls. <laughs> good, so. good. That's a whole dad. All right, I never knew that. Yeah, All there right. you go. It's good to know. Um, all right, so now we're going to get into the travel section of the questions. Uh, question number 19, uh, Terrence asks, if you traveled much with your family, and how did Chris as a child handle travel? I traveled with Chris and his mother periodically and, and usually in, in a Fleetwood, Cadillac Fleetwood limousine <laughs> in which he and his mother would sit in the back and they would say, James, we are going to be going to Disneyland or we are going to be going to Knox Bay Farm and we'll sit here in the back <laughs> and relax onward. And so... Many of my memories were riding in this beautiful limousine on trips from San Diego to points not too far away. We never took any particularly lengthy trips. Vegas. Vegas. Mm -hmm. That wasn't in a limo, though. It was to a limousine convention. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was to a limousine convention. So, yeah, we traveled around the limos. Chris, Chris the traveled in style. The, the, the back story there is that my mom and dad owned a limousine company as I was growing up. So that's why we, that's, we, we weren't paying for the limousine riding in the back, right? My dad was driving limousine as my mom and I were riding and often sleeping in the back. Shall we answer that? Let it go to voicemail. It's, will you edit this? I, I will edit it now. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was uh, Electric Rick's uh, phone message uh, screening out the solicitor of the day. You see, they don't like to leave a message, even though I'm so happy to hear what they want to say. <laughs> good, good. My dad always wanted to be a radio announcer, and actually you were on some college radio at I, some I, point, I, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I always thought that I had that voice, that, that college radio voice, and... Uh, <laughs> The problem was they wanted me to play what they wanted to hear, and I didn't want to play what I wanted them. So I wanted to play what I wanted to play, so gosh. I thought at one time I would be doing voiceovers. But I don't know. It just never happened. If anybody needs voiceover talent, you now know, you now know where to come. Voiceovers? So. How about phone messages? Yes. I'm good at phone messages. <laughs> good. Uh, Henry Willoughby 
says, of those family vacations we took, what is your most memorable? Uh, the most memorable wouldn't really be too much of a vacation. It would just be a trip to uh, Knoxbury Farm. I would say that would be a, a staycation, and that's very memorable. Um, although there were some trips to a water park. I don't remember where the water park was exactly, but I remember a water park we went to. We went to Wild Rivers. Wild Rivers, which mm -hmm. was located in Irvine. In Irvine. Mm -hmm. It's no longer there. It is no longer in its previous location. It just reopened this past year in a new location. Oh, oh, so, wow. yeah. Same name, different park. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah, those are uh, memorable, but. Question 21 comes from You Did Well asks Did Chris have the travel bug since childhood? I don't think so. I don't recall that being true. I don't know when he started the desire to travel. I can't pinpoint. Can you tell me when you? Yeah, I sure can. It was when I met OC Girl, and oh. uh, she really liked Japan, and she said, we should go to Japan, because she went to foreign exchange school in Japan. We took our first trip to Japan, and I was, like, concerned about how I'm not going to be able to eat anything, hotels are going to be awful, it's going to be the land of strange and foreignness, and then I found that I just loved it there. Um, and so that was... And that was the, the spark. That was the spark. Oh, yeah, wow. That was the spark. Trip to Japan in 2004, so I was... 23 at the time, right? So that is when the bug of travel Yeah, I don't know. Me. I don't know where I was at that time. Yeah. Obviously in a different world. He's traveling. Not in witness protection or anything. Yeah, you know? Not in witness protection, you know. But, uh, yeah. Question 22 comes from Marit, and a few people asked this question as well, uh, but Marit's version of it is, if you could travel to one destination with Chris for a week, where would it be and why? Uh, it would be to Las Vegas. Um, I think there's a lot of things in, in Las Vegas that I would just love to see with my son, uh, including the pinball uh, museum and shows and foods and just. Yeah, I think that'd be a, a, a wonderful place to go. Where, where would you Where would you like to go? Uh, I go to a lot of places. In fact, I'm going to Vegas to make my What's New in 2023 update. I think a place that you would enjoy going yeah. is actually Tokyo. And I know it's a long flight, but I think you would enjoy the electronics, you'd enjoy the light, and you'd enjoy all the high tech stuff there. I would certainly say that would be a, a wonderful alternative. A little further flight, but yeah. For sure, for <laughs> sure. My dad does not like long flights if you haven't figured that out. No, so I... what's the last long flight you've been on? <laughs> <laughs> It's been so long ago. Czech Republic, 40-odd uh, uh, yeah. years ago? Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Right. That, was, that was the place. Uh -huh. That was a long flight. But, you know, that's back when the uh, the seats on the airlines were uh, bigger than they are now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're really, they're really something <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, a little more leg room. Keep getting there, narrower so. and smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I'm told. Uh, Jeremy asks, what places haven't you been to that you want to go? Um, I would like to go to, uh, Tahiti. Tahiti? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Stay in one of those overwater bungalows. Yeah. 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 With, yeah. like, the water slide from your room just right into the ocean. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That'd be nice. That'd, That'd be, be nice. nice. Yeah. Uh, Andrew wants to know, this question 24, will you be doing a short series of Travels with the Kid? <laughs> I haven't thought about that. <laughs> All right. Um, sure, and, why not? Okay, sounds good. Well, I don't know. Maybe you all should let us know. Do you want to see Electric Rick in more videos? If so, what capacity do you want to see him yeah, in? And yeah. I, I need to learn but with these microphones. I have a tendency to clap. I have a tendency to like do this, but I need to do it because I realize when I bring my hands together uh, <laughs> with the microphone being here that like really picks that up. What are we clapping for? No, nah, I just have a tendency, you know, because I like to use my hands when I talk. Yeah, I and if you, you oh, I can if do you, that. Yeah, glued them down. I can't speak anymore. Yeah, damn it. Okay. Uh, final question. Question 25 comes from Trip Hacks DC. Rob from Washington, DC. Rob says, who would win Rick versus Chris head to head in Dance Dance Revolution? Oh, Chris, <laughs> no question. That was, a, that was an easy one. You should see this guy on, on Dance Dance Revolution. It's just amazing. His feet are just flying like a fool, and, and uh, he's smiling all the time. <laughs> People are amazed at what he does. Yeah, I, that's not my game. Maybe, maybe uh, uh, we could try a game of uh, chess. 
Chess, chess, or frisbee, frisbee. Uh, frisbee. frisbee. Um, uh, my dad is very good at disc golf. Fris so. Frisbee golf. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think we we could go head to head on that one. We, we need what we need to try is pickleball. Pickleball. Yes. All right. I've, I've been hearing a lot of things about. I've pickleball. been hearing a lot of things about pickleball. I don't really yeah. know the game. But yeah. It sounds like a game that we should try. All right. We should we should do that. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. Well, uh, Electric Rig Dad, thank you for being on the show today. Come here into the center and look into this camera and uh, share any final words of wisdom that you have for our fellow explorers. Well, you know, there's only there's only two things to worry about, and uh, this is my message to you. There's there's really nothing to worry about, but but two things to worry about, and that is either you're healthy or you're sick. And if you're healthy, there's nothing to worry about. And if you're sick, well, there's only two things to worry about. Either you get better or you get worse. Now, if you get better, there's nothing to worry about. And if you get worse, there's only two things to worry about. Either you live or you die. And if you live, there's nothing to worry about. And if you die, there's only two things to worry about. Either you go to heaven or you go to hell. And if you go to heaven, you have nothing to worry about. And if you go to hell, you'll be so busy shaking hands with all your friends, you won't have time to worry. Nice, nice. So, so why worry? <laughs> all right. Well, folks, boys, as usual, we won't say goodbye because we're going to see you in the next video. We'll see you in the next video.